God's going to lift our faith this morning. We are God people, which means we have faith. That's what distinguishes us from anyone else, that we have faith. We have faith in a living God who has saved us, redeemed us, and has a mighty purpose for us. How about we lift up our hands right from the start? We're not going to warm up and say, I'll wait till something good said. How about we stir our hearts right now and say, I'm reaching out in faith right here, right now. Father, we pray right now that, Lord, You will present Yourself to every person, that You will speak a pertinent word. You'll speak a now word. You'll shift our hearts from complacency. You'll shift our hearts from doubts and fears. And Father, You will cause faith to come alive because You are a good God. We welcome You, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, You are here. We love You, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may take your seat. It's a great series on God people. We are God people, and as I said before, we carry a spirit of faith. And I pray that the spirit of faith I carry today will have an impact on yours to help you move. And I know I'm in a room with people with faith in their heart, but I believe something's going to shift, something's going to move. We're going to know the spirit of increase because when we've got faith, We carry the spirit of increase. You know, and I believe the seed of prophecy that has been sown into our heart equals the spirit of increase, that things will grow because we carry that seed of prophecy. And I love it as God's people, that God has a mighty plan for each and every one of us. I feel quite overwhelmed that God has a plan for me. Not sure whether that was me or not. Could be. I'm technically challenged. But I'm really excited to see, in a sense, I discover God's plan for my life. And I believe that for you too, that you don't just live in a a neutral space. You live in a space where you're reaching out and you're seeing God unfolding. You know, you find out about all the days that have been fashioned for you. And I'm like, wow, I'm overwhelmed, God. You are amazing. You always go well beyond what I could ever ask. And I like living in that, wow, God, you are amazing. I trust you. I see your hand at work and I love what you're doing. You know, we all know Jeremiah 29 verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Now we can speak that as Christians, But I really want to talk about entering into the Scripture. You know, and sometimes to enter into our inheritance, we've got to move ourselves. You know, it's one thing to have it framed and, oh, this is a nice, cute Scripture. But it's another thing to say, I need to enter in by faith. And God wants us to take possession of what He's already promised. I'm not sure whether you're like this, but I'm a bit unusual in the fact that I read books backwards. How many people read books backwards? Oh, you see, there's a few of you. You go to the end to see what happens, and then you do catch up all the way because you go back. Or you start at the front, and then you've got to check the back, and then you keep going. And I think I'm a bit like that with God, stretching out, stretching out to see what He's saying, and then coming back and, and, and catching up with my faith to take the steps to get to the place God wants me to be. So we're going to take territory, which means we need to enter in. Have you ever shifted house? and you've moved, and then you find yourself driving to the old house. We lived in an apartment in Parnell, and it was a great apartment, and I'd come up to the city office in Queen Street. And then when I was to go home, I would find myself, maybe because I'm a dreamer, driving left instead of right to the new house. I'd get so far down the road, and it's like, Helen, you don't live there anymore. And I had to get my car, turn it around, and drive intentionally back to the place that I now live. And you know, unless we consciously focus, and maybe when I left that car park building, focus, Helen, you live that way, not this way. But I think in the spirit, we do the same thing. We drift if we don't intentionally focus on faith. We unintentionally 
drift back to where we used to live. And you know, we've got to say in the spirit, we don't live there anymore. You know, you don't live there in that place of shame. You don't live there in that place of regret. You've got to move and turn yourself so you go, I live in a different place. I don't live in that land of negativity. I don't live in that land of doubt. I live in this place of faith. So I need to turn the wheel of my car, of my spirit, to intentionally focus. On my bedroom wall, I've got a heart chalkboard. And I intentionally focus by faith on the things I believe God has spoken to me to believe for. And I have great joy in rubbing them off. It's like, done, done, done. But God wants me to keep reaching out. But we've got to have an intentional focus. We've got to go the way that God is speaking. What's he saying to you? And I'm gonna talk about today a lot. What is he speaking to you prophetically and directionally that you've gotta go, whoa, I've gotta turn the car of my life around and focus there. It's gonna take a willingness to live in the new place. It's a faith place. And people are like, yeah, we're people of faith, people of faith. But are we? Are we have we really moved in? Have we really forsaken the old and gone into the new? Isaiah 1 verse 19 says, if you're willing and obedient, it's the ability to believe and follow, you shall eat the good of the land. Don't you love that? I'm overwhelmed that God would want to give me good things. He wants me to eat the fat of the land. He wants me to bring me into that place of enjoyment, just like he does you, that you can live with an incredible sense of God. You're so much greater. Your plans are so much bigger than I could have ever, ever dreamed. But you know, sometimes people find themselves in the wrong place. And if we look at the children of Israel, they were in the wrong place. They were living where God had never designed for them because they weren't willing, they weren't obedient, they were taken captive. And in Psalm 137, verse one to four, this is their lament. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hung our harps upon the willows in the midst of it. For those who carried us away captive asked of us a song. And those who plundered us requested mirth, saying, sing, sing us one of the songs of Zion. But they said, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? Because they were so captive to their environment. You know, and the enemy will taunt us. When we're living in the wrong place, we're not in the place where we should be. When we're not in the place of faith, the enemy will taunt us and say, come on, where's your faith? I thought you were believing. And the children of Israel needed to get up again on their feet. And today I'm gonna to address the sat down. There we sat down. I preach other sermons, it's like sit down by the well. <laughs> But this is the wrong sort of sat down. There we sat down, we sat under the promise. We sat under the potential. We sat under the possibilities of God. And we can't even sing the songs anymore because we're dreaming of our land, but it's so distant. It's so far away. And God wanted them to turn their hearts to get up again and to take possession. We've got to get our feet on the land that God has called us to in the spirit. We've got to put our feet on it. We've got to get up onto our feet. So perhaps today you're not where you should be. But the good news is you can make a move. Perhaps you're a little bit sat down. Perhaps you're a little bit under it. Faith is gonna stir because today is your day. Today is the day where you're gonna come alive again. As God people, we've got the Holy Spirit. I love the Holy Spirit. I have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. I speak to the Holy Spirit every day. And He shows me things that my little brain could not comprehend. It's like, wow, that was more than I could ever, ever think of. And there's a lovely friendship quote which goes, um, a friend is someone who knows the song in your heart and can sing it back to you when you have forgotten the words. Do you know, and the Holy Spirit is my friend as God's people, the Holy Spirit is your friend. And He wants to sing you the song back, the song of your heart, where maybe you have forgotten the words. He wants to sing it back. I love the prompts of prophecy. Are you aware of prophecy? Prophecy will prompt us. Prophecy will push us back into the place we can so we can be on track to inherit everything that God has for us. God was reminding Joshua in Joshua chapter one, 
verse one to three. It says this. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I'm giving to them, the children of Israel, every place that the sole of your foot will tread on, I have given you, as I said to Moses. Verse six, be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. You know, it's like it wasn't just an inheritance for Joshua, but he was gonna divide it up to all those people. And God was saying to um, Joshua, Moses might be dead, but the promise remains. And often we're trying to recapture errors. We're like, oh, I like that error. I liked it back then. Oh, I like this. And we're trying to stir up something that God said, that's over. That period is over. It's a whole new season, but the promise is still the same. Go in and take possession of it because it's yours and the inheritance is great. Moses was an awesome leader. He had brought them out of bondage, but now Joshua was about to lead them in. And there's the prompt of prophecy. The promise is the same. The promise remains. You just need to be able to go in, not sit, sit down or sat down and move on in. So I wanna ask you today, what are you waiting for? There's lands to possess, there's dreams to realize, you're given an inheritance as a possession and we narrow it down to what we can manage, what we could think of. And God said, no, the inheritance vast and you can divide it all up and give it to the people you're leading. You're like, wow, that is amazing. So how do we enter in? As God's people, how do we enter in? I'm gonna give you three simple things. This is simple preaching on faith. Come on, because faith pleases God. Come on, faith is the substance of things hoped for. And we can be sat down, passive, letting life happen to us, or we can take charge and rise up in the name of Jesus. So number one, today counts. In Joshua 3 verse five, and Joshua said to the people, sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Don't you love that? We want the wonders among you. But God says, sanctify yourself. You know, come on, set yourself apart. And sometimes we've just got to say, I'm going to enter in today. I'm going to draw the line and sanctify myself. You know how sometimes something's looking like it's going to break and you think, oh, I'll fix that later. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow. Or, you know, a bit of thread comes loose and, oh, I'll leave it till later. And whoop, the whole hem comes down or, or whatever you were worried about going to break breaks. Because we didn't do or intervene at the right time. If you don't act today, tomorrow will be spent fixing today's mistakes. And a lot of people are still fixing today's mistakes instead of entering in today. We want our tomorrow to have signs and wonders and miracles and the position that God has for us. But we've got to learn to stop, you know, and say, what are you saying, Lord? I talked about the Holy Spirit wanting to talk to us. And when we were on holiday, I had to learn to stop. We were camping as a family, and there was many of us, probably 20 something, on the campsite. And I'd gone in my little blue car to the village to get some food. And you know, it's quite a little drive, not too far, but five minutes maybe. And I was on my way back, and I noticed that there was a siren behind me. You know, but I was thinking, couldn't be me. I'm not doing anything, you know. <laughs> I'm doing the speed limit, couldn't be me, and I carried on. And he followed me all the way to the campsite. He pulled in as I pulled in. And Bruce and them were watching, and they were going like, oh, there's a traffic officer, he's chasing someone. Oh, he's chasing mum. <laughs> and Sam said to me later, mum, you should always pull over when there's a traffic officer after you. I'm like, but I'm inexperienced, I don't know that. <laughs> And so he was cross. He was really cross. Normally people are quite kind to me. But <laughs> he was cross, like, why didn't you stop? And I said, oh, I didn't think it could be me, you know? 
And it wasn't a black and white car or whatever color they are. It was just a sort of a mufti color. So I thought it might be kids. You know, it might be kids following me behind, <laughs> behind me. <laughs> Naive, I know. Anyway, I stopped over and he was cross. Why didn't you stop? And I thought I didn't think it could be me. And what I had done was not stop at a stop sign in the village. And he said, people are doing that all the time. It's the bane of my life. So he wasn't gracious and he gave me a $180 fine. And I'm on one side in the car and Bruce and the boys are over the side of the road watching. <laughs> and then Joel, who was six, yells out, Mammy, are you going to jail? <laughs> so I've learned something. If you're followed by a policeman, stop. But also, if there's a stop sign, stop. And you know, God is pulling us over. Sometimes he's flagging some things and we go, oh, it couldn't be me. I'm doing actually quite nice in my Christian life, but God's saying, no, there's more. And I'm pulling you over and I'm flagging things because today I want you to address them. I want you to sanctify yourself for tomorrow. I'm gonna do wonders among you. So we gotta consecrate ourselves. And what does that mean is we separate ourselves. Sometimes we need to draw a line and separate ourselves from negative thinking. Maybe from idolatry, things that we're focused on. Maybe disappointments, like, no, I don't live there anymore. I separate myself from that. Maybe you've got to go, I'm a bit unbelieving and I'm a bit cynical. Draw a line and say, I don't live there anymore because if we want to inherit this, we've got to sanctify ourselves, consecrate ourselves, draw the line. Maybe independence. I just want to be a bit independent. We won't inherit unless we let God pull us over and we listen to what he's saying. What is he saying to you? A long time ago in my life in Wanganui, when we lived there, a long time ago, I drew a line. And I said, I'm not thinking tired. Do I get tired? Yes. I'm 65, but I've got a lot of energy. Because I thought, I'm not gonna think tired because you become what you think. I will get naturally tired, but I'm not gonna think tired and think that's gonna cost me this or that's gonna cost me that. I'm not also gonna think sick. Now sickness comes. And sometimes it's totally unpreventable, but I'm not gonna think sick. I'm consecrating myself so I can live in the fullness. I had to draw a line and you know, deal with the fear of failure. Helen, separate yourself from it. It's like when you're tempted to be a perfectionist, when you're tempted to think, unless I can do it perfectly, I won't do it, I'm no good at it. I had to draw a line and God said to me, I'm happy with the way you do things, Helen, you're not. And I had to learn to live out, get out of that land, consecrate myself, because I wanna see the signs and wonders and miracles that God wants to do. You know, sometimes we're so worried about what others think about us. And I like this saying, we would worry far less about what others think about us when we realize how seldom they do. They're more worried about what you think of them. And we've gotta say, I draw the line when I'm tempted to think unbelief, no, I don't live there. I don't live in negativity, I don't live there, I live in the land of faith. Holy Spirit, help me when I'm weak. Holy Spirit, help me to cross over, because I wanna see the signs and wonders and miracles. You know, if we live on this side, without sanctifying ourselves, we handicap ourselves. We restrict ourselves and we limit ourselves from the fullness of what God wants. So separate yourself today, why? So you can enter in today. Tomorrow depends on today. And if we don't deal with what we need to today, we don't stop and go, I hear you, God. I hear you. I pull over. I believe God's just flagging things for people right now. I believe the Holy Spirit's ministering. He's like, you've lived in that area too long. Come on, sanctify yourself today because tomorrow I wanna do wonders among you. Psalm 95 verse seven and eight says, today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your heart as in the rebellion, as in the day of trial in the wilderness. Come on, today counts. Today, today, today. Turn to your neighbor and say, today counts. Don't put it off till tomorrow. Do it today. Number two is today, grow in grace. To Peter, we're encouraged, three, verse 17 and 18. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, the decisions 
you've already made, being led away with the error of the wicked. Here's the challenge, but grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. And sometimes we just need, and that's why God flags us over to put things right, but we just need to grow internally a whole lot bigger. If God wants to give us this amount and our heart's about this small, how are we going to handle it? And we need to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is interested in our maturity, and there's more to enter in. Sometimes we think, I know what Christianity is about. I've got it down. No, we haven't, because if we're on a journey, there's more to enter into, and we need to grow accordingly to be able to handle the responsibility that God wants to give us. God wanted the children of Israel to grow in response to being delivered. He heard their cry. They were oppressed. They were in bondage. They couldn't take the weight of what was upon them in Egypt any longer. And their groanings reached up to God, and he sent a deliverer. And we know the story of how Moses led them out. But God wanted a growing with the going. And sometimes we're going, but we're not growing. And it's like the children of Israel followed Moses out of the wilderness into external freedom. It's like, yeah, we're into that. We're following. But they didn't break through in an internal freedom. They didn't change their mindsets from being victims. They were like, Moses, you'll take us out there. We'll follow you, Moses, yay. But as soon as the pressure of change or transformation came, they buckled and they wanted to go back to where they'd come from with all the horrors of what it was they thought they were better off. Do you know with growth, with entering in, there's gonna come newness, there's gonna come challenges. And let's not just follow others into an external freedom, oh, great environment, but we change as well. With the going, there's got to be a growing. There's got to be a knowledge of God that expands, that uh, that you see his grace at work in ever-increasing dimensions. God wants us to change, you know, and he wants us to respond with what he's sending at the time. And what God did for the children of Israel, he provided. So they went out into the wilderness, there was no cafes. How about that? How do you manage without cafes? So he sent them down manna from heaven. He dropped it, he rained it. And do you know, in that provision, there was supernatural power. You know, that would have taken the children of Israel if they'd went, and taken it. Amazing. 11 days to get into the promised land. But because they complained about the manna and what they thought they were missing out on, they went round and round the wilderness and never entered into the promised land as God had designed for them. The translation of manna is, what is it? And we can look at the changes or the challenges or the provision that God provides for us and we can go, what is it? This is amazing. God, you've provided and this is gonna nurture my soul. This is gonna nourish my soul. This is gonna get me into the promised land. Or we can go, what is it? I wanted it as as it was. And they started to complain in Exodus 16, it says, and the children of Israel said to them, oh, that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, where we sat, we sat down by the pots of meat, and when we ate bread to the full, for you have brought us into, out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Here's God pr- proving, and he's pouring down miraculous provision. They're complaining about the miracles. That is a walking into external freedom without experiencing an internal freedom and a growing in grace and in the knowledge of God that this is amazing. What's our approach to what God is laying right before us? I just coined a phrase. God wants to transform us. It talks about being transformed by the renewing of our mind, separating ourselves. But I put it down here for me, transformation comes through the transferring of trust. And often we don't know that we're hooked on to things. We're depending on other things to get us through. We're wanting other things to support us. But transformation or largeness or extension comes through transferring our trust. And that's how transformation comes when we get bigger. We get larger on the inside. And you know, when I thought about that, it reminded me of a book that I read as a young Christian. 
Now, you'll either love this book or you'll hate this book. I love this book because it's allegory, it's great English, it's got hidden spiritual truth, so it's like, oh, it's my sort of book. And um, it was about a little girl called Much Afraid. And Much Afraid lived in the Valley of Humiliation. And her relatives were the fearing family, craven fear, and they had all sorts of names. But she met the Good Shepherd, and she wanted to ascend to the Mountain of Spices with him. So he invites her on this journey, and he pushes in uh, a, a, a thorn of, of love into her heart. So Much Afraid is crippled, her mouth's distorted. She's afraid of everything. Maybe it was a little bit like me. But she wanted to ascend. So she comes to the base of the mountain and the good shepherd meets her there because she's got a heart to ascend. She's got a heart to go higher. But then she sees the companions that the good shepherd has picked out for her. So she comes up and she sees these figures dressed in black. <gasps> and she flinches back. She does not want to accept the traveling companions. And God will choose our traveling companions as something sometimes travels alongside us that will actually cause us to ascend. And these black figures, hooded figures, had names. And their names were sorrow and suffering. And the good shepherd says to her, you lean on them. They'll help you. They'll help you when the going gets tough. They'll help you get up over some of the precipices. They'll help you over the crevices. If you lean on them, you'll find more strength. And you will find the journey easier. And often we flinch. I didn't think that was part of my journey of entering in. Didn't think that was part of my inheritance. But life happens and sorrow comes and suffering comes. And we can either flinch back and get back into our own little ball of not having internal freedom. Or we can break out and say, I'm going to lean on this. I'm going to use it to ascend, to find a bigger place. And as she climbed with sorrow and suffering, sorrow and suffering were transformed into joy and peace. Don't you just love that? That God gives you the capacity to handle more? And much afraid became grace and glory. And she learned what it is to walk with hinds feet on high places on the mountain of spices. She knew how to come down to minister, not out of a place of fear, but out of a place of, this is integrated in my life, to minister to her fearing family and seeing them put their trust in the good shepherd as well. God has traveling companions. I liken it to sometimes my devotionals. You know, at the right time, I, I read the word a lot and I listen to the Holy Spirit. Sometimes I get a devotional and they're traveling alongside me because it's the, the spirit is ministering into where I'm at. T.D. Jakes walked alongside me in his devotional. Heidi Baker's walking alongside me in my devotional. Who's your traveling companion? But you know, the greatest traveling companion is the Holy Spirit. And let's not shy back from the challenges that will actually, I've been transformed because I've used fear in my life to push on to find something greater in God that will stand me in the place now where I can live on the mountaintops, where I can come down and minister out of what I've found. But sometimes we just wanna go without growing. We've gotta grow as we go. God doesn't deliver us so we stay the same. He delivers us and we go, whoa, I can grow a whole lot bigger because God, you want to increase my sphere. What's your mana today? My mana years back in 2000 was, God wanted me to pick it up, was go to London. And I could have said, what is it? In a way, it rocked my world, leaving the family, leaving the church. But I didn't because I had enough of the fear of the Lord to go, what is it? What is it I'm gonna find in the supernatural manner that you're challenging me to pick up? Why did the children of Israel wanna sit down? Because we're like, oh, we want to go back to Egypt because we sat down around the meat. We didn't have to go and fetch it. We didn't have to appreciate it. We just, and yet they wanted all the bondage, forgotten all the bondage that went with that. So we went to London and it's like, what is it? And I know it was about Bruce and my growth. It was about an expansion, it was about ascending. It was about enlarging our capacity. And God grew us and grew other people in the process. What's God challenging you? you go, mm, shine, mm. 
Instead of saying, wow, what is it? What's in that? The supernatural power of God to launch us into a whole new area. So receive God's provision, however he's raining down your miracle. And when you're delivered, don't refuse to change. Go with an expectation that God is increasing you. Last one is today is your day. Today, you're closer than you think. You're closer to your promise, and I'm prophesying, you're closer to your breakthrough. You know, it's within reach, but sometimes we've got to win it on the inside first before it changes. Sometimes we've got to say, I got that by faith. Today is your day. Today is your day because it's all about choices. In Acts 3 verse 2, and a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple. He was sat down. Why was he sat down? That's not good English, but I'm just using it. Because he was crippled. But he sat by something so beautiful. It was the wall called Beautiful that entered into the temple. But he couldn't access it because he was crippled, much like much afraid. He could watch other people go in, access, come out. But it wasn't for him and he'd resigned himself. So when he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple asking for alms, he fi and fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. So he gave him, them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. I believe his prayer was, help me out. Help me out. And their legitimate prayers help me out. When I preach, I'm saying, help me out, Holy Spirit. That's legitimate. But God would rather us pray, help me up. Help me up so I can access for myself, that I don't have to come every day. He was asking for arms because that's what he did. That's what he did every day because he had lost vision. He had lost hope for the future. I'm never gonna be able to get into that place. I'm not gonna be able to receive what other people receive. That's a lie. And we've gotta allow breakthrough to happen in our hearts. And so Peter said, silver and gold, I do not have, but what I do have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. You know, maybe if he knew Peter and John weren't gonna give him money, I wonder if he would have actually given them their attention. He was looking for money. Peter and John were responding in faith and like, you need to get out of that predicament. We're gonna pull you up. They went out and they stretched out their hand, they took him. And they lifted him up and the Bible says, and immediately his feet and his ankles gained strength. And he went into the temple walking, like I'm accessing, I'm in here, leaping and praising God. And you know, sometimes we're lame in our excuses. I know when I'm a bit lame, sometimes I shy off things and somebody pulls me. And it's like, wow, I'm glad you pulled me. I'm glad you got me up because something of the gifting and the grace of God in me just came to the fore. I was afraid, I didn't wanna go in. You pulled me, your faith pulled me. Your faith got me and lifted me onto my feet, my feet got strength and something that was resident or latent within me came to the fore and I'm so glad that you did that. And I believe the Holy Spirit's gonna put his hand in yours and pull you to your feet. I know a song that when Sam was sick, that I prayed and sung a lot was from C3. Get up onto your feet, get up onto your feet. I can't sing it, get up onto your feet. They had a lovely prophetic beat, get up onto your feet. And I think it's so easy to be sat down, having lost sight of vision, not separating ourselves, not recognizing the miracle provision that's there that's got supernatural grace in it. We're not leaning on those things that would cause us in the natural to despair, but saying, I can lean on them and grow my capacity because I learn more about God and that, and He's great. And He never, ever lets me down. We've got to watch our hearts. I heard Brian Houston say, and it really spoke to me. We've got land to inherit. inherit. He didn't say, this is mine. <laughs> got to put our feet on that. Come on, get your feet in the Spirit on your possession. Come on, move yourself out of the land of hopelessness or never gonna happen. Get your feet in the spirit on it. But he just said, um, from 2 Corinthians, it says, guard your heart in a sense and don't let get the enemy get a foothold. What's a foothold? A foothold is a piece of land. And you know, the land you give away in your heart through unforgiveness, through fear, 
through disappointment will cost you the land of your life. And we've got to make sure we keep our hearts free. Why? Because there's more to inherit. There's more to enter in. Maybe you need someone to pull you up today. Maybe you need a provoke of faith. And I'm not saying that in a condemning way. We all need it. Bruce continually provokes me, but I provoke him too. <laughs> Come on, let's believe. Don't resist the God setups. Why? Because it could cause you to walk, leap, and praise God. A new energy to your feet, a new strength to your feet, and life to your spirit. You'll enter into a new place of grace and glory and power. You know, we need to move from maybe that space where like, God, you only tell me what I want to hear. And sometimes we're like that, God, I only want to hear this. Don't say anything different. Don't say God said, no, I'm flagging this. I'm getting your attention and I want you to move. And today we're talking about moving in. We're talking about entering by faith. I love faith. Faith makes me alive. Faith makes my heart sing. It makes me dance on the inside like we, we sing. And we need to come alive in faith. And today we're gonna break off any oppressions where you're sat down, where you're not in the land maybe that you should be. How about we change our prayer from help me out, oh, daily survival, daily survival, to help me out so I can go in. I can set the atmosphere. I can set the tone. I can change environments. Today, what's God saying to you? I feel like my today is I'm, I'm one for contending for breakthrough. I know how to fight in the spirit. I need to know how to fight in prayer. God just said to me the other day, Helen, breakthrough's here. Wow. That's my today word, and I'm entering into it. There's a quietness. There's a confidence. Yeah. That's my word, and see, breakthrough's here. Just live in it. Live in it. And watch yeah. what God does. What's God saying to you? Your today might be different, but you need to hear what God is saying to you. And I'm gonna pray that you hear that. So today counts. Maybe you need to address the drift in your life. Where well, you're driving the car back to the old place, the car of your mind. Where well, you keep moving back in there instead of going, no, I live in a whole new place. Today counts. Maybe today we need to grow in grace. God, I've been taking you for granted and you're raining out miracles and sometimes I'm complaining about the miracles. But I don't wanna go back into bondage. I wanna to grow to be yeah. able to handle you know, the exponential that you want to give me. And today is yours. Today is your day to hear something from the Holy Spirit and to get up onto your feet. And we're just gonna pray right now into where you're sat down. There was three people sat down. The children of Israel sat down, they couldn't see. The children of Israel again wanted to sit down by the pots because they didn't wanna have to take, make an effort to go out and fetch their manna. And the lame man was sat down until Peter and John come. And there's a lot of people in our world who sat down. And we can offer that hand of faith because faith can be witnessed by other people. Hope can be witnessed by other people. The spirit of God's love. We're God's people. We carry the spirit of faith to change environments. But we're gonna hear the Holy Spirit and not just be dull, not be hard of hearing, not hardening our hearts today as the people did in the wilderness. They go, I'll move, I'll yield. I'm not gonna sit down, I'm gonna take possession. And today's about putting your feet on the land God has for you. For those who know and maybe, you know, that you're a bit sat down, or even if you just wanna say, I'm gonna get up onto my feet, get up onto my feet. Come on, if you speak by faith into yourself, you'll get up on your feet, yeah. right? You'll start dancing, you'll start celebrating. It's good, Helen. Because God's spirit takes over. Your limitations are nothing to God. When you're weak, he's strong. So if you know that something needs to change or you're just making a statement of faith, I'm gonna possess my land, I need to get my feet on it. How about standing to your feet and I'm gonna pray for you and then pass back to Pastor Sam. Okay, let's have an expectation. The Holy Spirit's here. Father, I thank you that you speak in so many different ways. You translate what has been said into the hearts of lives, Lord God. But we know that your plans are good and why would we wanna miss it out? Why would we wanna rely on ourselves, Father, when you've got all the power? 
Father, I thank you, Lord God, as there's a song of the past I used to sing, learning to lean, learning to lean, learning to lean on Jesus, finding more power than I'd ever dreamed, learning to lean on Jesus. Father, I pray for people here that the challenges, they'll look at in a whole new way. That, Father, as we lean on you, there's power. We lean on you, we find things that we would never discover. So, Father, I thank you right now for that possession mindset right now in the name of Jesus. That there's a shifting out. And right now, I just see yourself shifting out of a land of unbelief, shifting out of a land of negativity, shifting out of a land that, oh, that will never happen to me. I just watch others, but I don't enter in myself. How about shifting out of that now and saying, I'm in the land you want me to, Lord God. Father, I pray for a shifting of hearts. I pray, Lord God, for the revelation of the Holy Spirit. I pray for an igniting of faith. I pray faith into this place in the name of Jesus. I pray faith into hearts. Right now, Lord God, there be a rising, there be a rising of the tide. That breakthrough is here in the name of Jesus. Father, things that people have been waiting for, 